Right, now, um, so far the functions we've been dealing with have all really been polynomials, okay? And that's because they're the thing you're most comfortable with differentiating and integrating. They're the first ones you encounter when it comes to calculus. But of course you can differentiate and integrate a whole bunch of other kinds of functions, not just polynomials. So let's have a go at this one right here. This is gonna throw at you some trigonometric functions. And I'm gonna try and go through this question nice and slowly and methodically, um, but I'm gonna point out at certain points uh, during this solution, this worked solution, you're definitely going to come to a point where you're like, I'm, I'm not familiar with this. It's been a while since I've touched uh, functions and graphs like uh, of this kind. So what that probably says to you is, you've got some revision to do to go back and understand um, those things because they're gonna kind of become assumed knowledge for this. This is an integral calculus question. Um, there's lots of stuff apart from integral calculus that you need to know how to work with. So let's have a go at this. Find the area bounded between y equals sine x and y equals cos x and then they give you a specific domain because um, you're going to see why in a second that might be relevant um, that they need to say hey just, just look within here don't just look at it all over the entire domain for all real values. What's the first step? Well, we're going to start with the first S, which is sketch, right? Now, maybe that's your first uh, uh, roadblock. You're like, I don't know what the sketch of these looks like. Thankfully, you've been given um, the most basic kinds of trigonometric functions there are. Y equals sine x, y equals cos x, and you've been given them in what we call the, like the standard domain, the domain you um, encounter all the time from naught to two pi, which if you can't recall, that's, um, 360 degrees, so we're gonna get one full cycle um, of both of these functions, okay? It is important though that it's in radians. All of the results that we know for differentiating and integrating trigonometric functions, they all come from radians. So if you like, um, there's lots of uh, stuff you can look at to prove that for yourself, other videos if you're curious. So let's have a go at drawing this. Now, um, in this case, my accuracy is gonna be quite important. So I'm gonna try and do everything with ultra straight lines here. Okay, now I'm gonna draw this from naught to two pi and um, I, I need to get a sense of what these look like reasonably accurately. So I'm just gonna give you a quick crash course on how I uh, physically, oops, I didn't mean to move that, um, how I physically draw these things, okay? For sine x, I know it's roughly, it's, it's this guy, right? It roughly looks like that, but I need to do more than just roughly because this graph is gonna interact with another graph. Um, it's gonna give me, it's gonna show me where the regions are. So it needs to be good enough that I can use that fact. So from not to two pi, um, the important spots to put are, number one, your endpoint, that's gonna be two pi over here. Um, the middle of the graph, which I'm just gonna eyeball, but if you have a ruler, obviously you can do it more accurately. It's at pi over there. Uh, and then you're gonna go up and down from one to negative one. That's the range of this function, okay? And once you've got your one and your negative one, um, if you think back to this, this general shape again, you've got this highest point and this lowest point, which occur um, one quarter through the graph and then three quarters through the graph. So um, the relevant values there are pi on two, so there's gonna be a spot up there, and then uh, three pi on two, which is gonna be here. So there's gonna be a spot there. And now what I've got is um, one, two, three intercepts, and then this top spot and this bottom spot, we call them the, um, the turning points, right? So now I'm ready to thread the needle, or I'll do my best. Now, I don't know how you do this, but um, I generally find it's easiest to start at the top, go down to the bottom, and then do the same, but in reverse. So you wanna make sure you go through there, and roughly through there. Now, it's not perfect, uh, <laughs> that, that turning point down the bottom looks a bit gross, but it, it is good enough. It goes through all the right spots that I need. So this guy is y equals sine x. Now I'm gonna pull out another color, one that I haven't used yet. Let's go with green. And now I'm gonna do y equals cos x. Now, um, some of you may recall that the, the cos in uh, cosine, um, the cos in cosine I should say, it stands for complement. So it's um, 90 degrees or pi on two radians um, shifted from this guy. Now if you can't remember that, maybe you can just recall that the general shape is this kind of um, big dipper kind of shape, right? You're gonna start at the top, you end up at the bottom right in the middle, which is at pi, and then you end up back where you started, okay? And um, these other spots here at pi on two and three pi on two, they're gonna be my intercepts. So I'll just label them in pi on two, three pi on two. Okay, so just like before, I'm ready to try and uh, get my sketch here. And so I'm gonna try and thread the needle as best as I can. There we go. We'll do one half and then my, I'm right-handed, so the other half, uh, is easier for me to draw if I start from over there. 
There we go, all right. Like I said, not my best work, but it will do the job. Now, what does the question say? It says, find the area bounded between these two curves in the domain zero to two pi. Now, there's a bit of sneaky language in here because the area bounded between them at the moment is just going to be, um, I'm gonna shade it in yellow here. It's just gonna be this part over here, right? But this language in the domain naught to 2 pi actually suggests to me that there's other um, lines that are being implied here, right? Um, when I say from naught to 2 pi, there's also an x equals 0 and an x equals 2 pi line that are kind of on the fences, if you like, of this boundary. So I'm just going to put them in. Um, let me put them in in black. So I've got there's x equals 0 uh, and there's x equals 2 pi. So now I have extra parts that I need to worry about. So I'm going to shade this one over here in pink, and I'm gonna do the same for reasons that are gonna become, become clear, also in pink, over here on the right hand side. So, you might have remembered um, the previous graph we looked at, there were two regions that we had to uh, integrate separately. Here I've got three, but I wonder if you've noticed why I've broken them up into only two colors. I'm gonna have a look at the yellow one, that's the one we started with, right? You've got y equals sine x, um, which is the blue graph, and then you've got y equals cos x, which is the green graph, okay? So in order to work out the area between two curves, I need to work out top take away bottom. This is blue take away green. So in order to do this area in here, I'm going to have to work out, sorry, that's the wrong color. Uh, I'm gonna have to work out uh, sine x take away cos x. And I'm gonna to have to integrate from some boundary to some other boundary to find that, okay? So that's the yellow area. What about the pink area? Well, for both of the pink areas, I should say, what you've got is um, the green, let me highlight it here. This is the green part, take away the blue part. That's where you start. And then over on the right hand side, you get the same deal. There's the green section on top again, take away the blue section. For, so for both of the pink areas, I'm going to have to do cos x take away sine x, and I'm going to have to integrate from the appropriate values, okay? Now, um, my, my pink areas, they start at x equals naught, and they end at x equals 2 pi, that's nice. But then I've got these, uh, these two spots in here where the yellow integral takes over, um, or the pink, pink, pink integral um, stops here, becomes yellow, then the yellow integral it goes and then it stops and at that point it transitions back into being the pink integral. So I need to find out what these two spots are. Just like with the questions we looked at before, I'm going to solve simultaneously to find points of intersection. 